Welcome to Green Pillars. Now, if you missed our episode last week, here's a recap and stay tuned because that information will come in handy for what we're about to do today. So last week I found myself with a bit of a bug problem. The insects were eating my beautiful crops. So I wanted to find ways in which I could help uh, stop that and, and you know have my crops start growing healthy again. So I paid a visit to my friends at EggCam, Sayed and Manda, who I just went there to learn more about uh, insecticides and pesticides, but actually got more than what I bargained for when they took out the time to tell me about safe farming practices. Um, they also told me about the needs of the insects that actually infest our crops and they also told me a little bit about soils and fertilizers that can help with the healthy growth of our produce. You're dealing with uh, insects, they are, they are live creatures. They feed, they drink, they breathe and they communicate just like us. And for them to survive, they need to feed. And when you plant an area, you remove all their vegetation and then you plant an area, the crops start to grow up beautiful and healthy and all of a sudden you have these signs and indications that they start feeding on one plant. Leaves are eaten, the stems are eaten. Those insects start coming in and they start, ah, this is a better food source. So they start coming in and they start munching on your vegetable garden. You must realize that they will communicate with each other. And Comparing vegetable crops that you're planting to the leaves of the trees and the bush that were there, you're offering them a better food source, so you must expect them that they will migrate from wherever they are in the bush to your garden to feed, because they know within three months you'll be harvesting that vegetables and they will no longer be able to feed on that. So by doing that, they'll, you'll be more prepared once you plant your crop they'll be more prepared for what will come next. When it comes to seed uh, raising, you need uh, organic compost. We sell uh, organic compost. You need a compost for root development. And a little bit of our, one of our organic fertilizers mixed together and you can sow your seeds. It gives the extra additional boost to the plant to pop up. We also sell the conventional uh, fertilizers, but we normally recommend uh, them to use the sustainable and the organic fertilizers to get good yields and uh, the soil health is good and all these are on our, our organic and sustainable fertilizers it's 100% um, uh, certified organic uh, fertilizers sustainable fertilizers and uh, it doesn't damage the soil biology and it uh, improves soil health the shelf life is better good taste we had the, the customer who walks in our door just last this monday yeah he used the same program this is organic uh, extra fossil potash, it's a uh, rock potash with uh, trace elements as well. He used this as a base at the rate of one tablespoon per plant. Oh, okay, yeah. One tablespoon. Yeah. Since it's certified organic, it doesn't burn or destroy the planting material. So as, as the roots germinate, it has a food source underneath it. And he side dress with the tete blend from week two, week eight and week 60. It's just three at the rate of tablespoon per plant. So altogether, he applied four tablespoon per nalo. One tablespoon of extra force and potash, base application, and three tablespoon of tete blend at week two, week eight, week 60. And then he applied protect seed trace. It's a soil active, it's organic liquid. What it does, it feeds the crop, but it mostly feeds the microbes in the soil so that they increase in numbers. Right. And when they increase in numbers, they become more active. And by doing that, they are the ones that unlock the mineral lockup in the soil and make the more minerals available for the crop. He came and he just wanted to thank her. He take more at the table and he thank her. He said, I harvested my tosala, I get six kg per crop. And imagine six, six, six kg per dollar at $2.50 per kg. So he said, so for us it's more, more than a bonus, it's more satisfactory when farmers come back with a big smile, with a record. So at least they are doing something right. Yeah. 
and knowing that they get the right result for us, we know that that drives them to do more. Learning this new information inspired me to start my very own herb garden and with the free consultation I got on which fertilizers to use and which potting mix to use, I picked up my supplies and headed back home to get my hands dirty with some DIY herb gardening. Herbs are amazing, whether it's for just display, whether it's for aromas or whether it's for cooking, they are perfect in every way. And you know, with what, what we've learned today when it comes to pesticides, when it comes to soil, we're gonna put all that knowledge to the test and actually do up our own little herb garden at home. So I have these, um, well, it's, it's kind of like a hanging uh, herb garden thingy, or you can plant whatever you want, flowers, but I'm gonna do herbs today. And they have these little um, hook thingies at the bottom where you can actually hang them um, either on top of each other or you can have them hanging side by side. Um, so I will, I probably have them hanging side by side, I think, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But what we're gonna do today is just individually fill them up um, with our fertilizer that we've got and our potting mix. So this is the stuff I got from uh, Egg Cam. And we also have today that the herbs that we're working with are actually coriander, which the seeds I soaked for about 15 minutes. They're already in the water right now. My mom actually had these rosemaries uh, growing and Oh, they smell so good. Just a few seconds of touching them and they and the smell just transfers to your hand and it just smells so delicious. Um, what we're gonna do is just replant them into these pots right here. We've also got some mint. Mint is so good, especially when it's a hot summer day and when we live in Fiji, it's a tropical country, we love ourselves a nice cool drink. So mint leaves right in there, a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of lemon, and there you have, in water by the way, just in water, and you have a perfect refreshing drink. Smells so good. Okay, we've also got chives. I, I love chives. So I'm actually gonna do my own little chive garden. I love that. And then we have some sweet basil. I love myself some Thai um, basil fried rice. There we go, so basil. And I'm gonna do some dill. Dill because things like rosemary and dill are a little bit more expensive at the stores than you'd like them to be. So having them growing in your own backyard will be uh, very good for your pocket and very good for your tummy. And very good for your nose too, because it smells so good. All right, so what we've got here is our potting mix. I've measured out how much it'll well how much I'll need for one of these uh, buckets or pots and this is the amount I'll need this is just my potting mixture now what I have to do is put a tablespoon each of um, each of these three fertilizers that I brought um, from ACAM so first up we have the L rock number three mix now all of these are slow release fertilizers and they all help in different ways. This one is an extra foss, um, extra foss and potash. Now these ones work really well with fruits and vegetables, but they, they work well with anything. Um, and then lastly, we have our pro phosphate, which also this is really good for your greens. So we're gonna be working with these today. What I have to do, uh, what our friend Manda told me to do was to put a tablespoon each into the potting mixture and then you mix it around mix it quite well and then transfer them back into their little pots here coming up next the final product of our herb garden Today we're putting together our very own hanging herb garden with the use of three organic fertilizers and some potting mix. We're working with chives, sweet basil, coriander, rosemary and mint. The first thing I did was mix one tablespoon of each of the three organic fertilizers with the potting mix required for each herb pot. As I mentioned before, I am as rookie of a backyard farmer as it can get. So I've just done my potting mix with the fertilizers. I've given them a nice little mix in together. What I'm gonna do is now transfer them to this pot. And this is the first time I am ever doing this. So this is gonna be a trial and error and we'll see how it goes. We'll visit our little um, herb garden. 
over the rest of the season and see if we did well or not. Now, if you are uh, interested in getting yourselves these fertilizers, uh, any kind of growth formula, as we learned about um, earlier on, please do visit Egg Camp located in Wailanda in Lamy. So the first herb I'm going to be planting today, my little herb garden, is chives, one of my favorites. It's not the ones we get here in Fiji, the local one. It is, I think it is imported, yes, but I do like the flavors of that one. So basically what I'm going to do is just uh, take it out of the packet, this is the packet, and just drizzle it all over my potting mixture with the fertilizer. Quite proud of it too. All right, there we go. And what I'm gonna do is just push them, give them a little push down. I'm also using a little bit of potting mix to lightly cover the seeds from the top after I put the seeds in. The process of all my herbs was basically the same. First, I measured out the right amount of potting mix needed for each pot. Then I added one tablespoon of each fertilizer and gave it a good mix. I then transferred the mix to the individual pots and added the seeds, including the rosemary and mint cuttings. I'm not gonna pretend that that wasn't one of the scariest things I've done, but I managed to pull through. Tip though, don't wear a white sun hat when working with soil. Um, and also we had to battle a little bit of rain, you know, the Suva weather, but we got it done. So uh, the other thing was I completely forgot about the coriander, so I wasn't able to uh, plant the dill, but that's okay. We've got the oregano and the dill for next time, and I will show you guys how to do that one too. But today we have our coriander, we've got our rosemary, we've got our chives, our sweet basil, and we've got our mint. Now this is what our herb garden is gonna be full of. Uh, over the next few episodes, we're gonna see how they're growing. Um, the potting mixture that I got was actually quite moist although I am gonna give them a little bit of water uh, just to keep them hydrated and most of these do need Sun so I'm gonna leave them out get them some natural uh, rain and sunshine and I'm sure they're gonna blossom I've got some lovely fertilizer in there too and I'm sure that's gonna help I cannot wait to see them uh, grow and show you guys and hopefully inspire you at home to try the same up next, this impressive 22-year-old has a serious passion for not only farming for himself and his own family, but the public as well. He started his Facebook page, Jay's Organic Farm Fiji, three months ago to help the community with their seedling supply. Joelle's aim is to keep seedlings affordable for all families struggling in today's economic climate. Joelle also provides consultations on technical advice for farming and aquaculture. Stick around, that's coming up. Now, if you're anything like me and you have a bit of a busy schedule, then it's probably easier for you to just buy your own 
a potting mixture, your actual pots where you plant the seeds. But you know, we know that nothing beats backyard farming. And if you have time on your hands or if you're really interested in doing your own pots and your own mixture, your compost, your soils, then I think you're gonna love my next guest. Hello, Joeli, how are you? Oh, Hi. I'm fine and great. Well, thank you so much for having me here to visit you in your garden. I'm a little bit out of breath, <laughs> as you can tell, but you look quite fit. So um, I've heard a lot about your work and I wanted to get to know you a little bit better. So how about we start off by telling our viewers on Green Pillars a little bit about yourself. Okay, Vinaka, my name is Chowele Wanganivalo, originally from Lao. I attend high school uh, in the Lao group and primary school in uh, Suva. And um, I'm currently a final year student at the University of the South Pacific studying marine science. Marine science? Yes. Now, a marine science student who has in fact taken agriculture in high school, but you're doing marine science now yes. in uni, where is the connection? Um, the connection when I came to know uh, how the marine and the land have been connected and one of the biggest issue in nowadays that really has a problem uh, causing an effect to the ocean, yeah. it is due to from agriculture runoff, we have the chemicals and from there uh, uh, getting to involved in the farm, it is like connecting yourself to the land, from there you can know how to take care of those uh, for, uh, for those uh, plants and from there you know the connection, from there you will get to know how to protect the environment because the value that plant gives to you, you've been connected. And also the first thing we have to do before moving to the ocean to protect the ocean, you have to protect the land first because the land mostly cause problem to the ocean because everything is washing down. For as I said before, agriculture runoff also has an effect to the ocean. Wow, and, and you're hearing this from a young man who is 22 years old, and he is the man behind all this, I mean, uh, along with the help of your cousins I hear, but uh, this massive farm, and I think I might have kind of disturbed you while you were doing a little garden here. So if you don't mind, I'd like to help you continue, yeah, well, shall we? Yeah, we, shall we? we can. Uh... What are we doing exactly? Okay, uh, at the moment now, I'm just uh, trying to fill up a, a few empty space here. Yeah. So we are replanting some uh, mustard uh, seedling. This right is now. mustard yes. seedling? Yes. Okay. So they are like a um, family with cabbage too. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So t show me what to do. Okay, you just uh, dig a bit hole. Yeah. And you put your seedling inside. Okay, let me see your... Okay, uh, maybe I just use my hand. <laughs> How's that? Is that enough? Yep. Okay. And you just go ahead okay. and just the press roots. the side together. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. You don't have to like really press it in. Yeah. Press it down, right? Okay, because, cool. Because this is not a root crop, they're just vegetable. It's uh, the root system doesn't really go down. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so now tell me, Joeli, how did you get into all this? Because you're quite heavily into doing a lot of the things yourself, like uh, your pots and stuff. I've yes. seen your plastic bottles and you don't waste anything. Mm. How did you get into that? So, like, um, as, I, as you mentioned before, that I took agriculture in high school, yeah. from there most of the things I have learned it from yeah. and um, with the help of uh, we have the app and technology nowadays yeah. such as uh, YouTube yes um, you can uh, Google search most of the thing that uh, uh, our friends in overseas been doing mm -hmm. so from there it also helps me to get those kinds of ideas like making my own uh, pot plant from the plastic bottle or even a old uh, tin fish or can or even container from there yeah and I even see you doing a lot of the composting uh, yourself and you use, you don't waste any peelings or eggshells or anything like that. Um, those ideas too, did you get that from YouTube or did you kind of already know because you did take agriculture yeah. in high school, right? So it's like it's a combination of uh, having that ideas uh, in a high school and yeah. also using the YouTube. And as I took marine science, uh, as we, there's a course there called marine pollution right from there we learn uh, how to to do a program to manage your waste 
So such as uh, for we have to separate all the plastic, we have to separate all the organic uh, waste where it can be reused again in the garden. Right. So that's like the combination of the all the ideas from high school, uh, internet and YouTube, and also from the marine science that course I mentioned. So I combined them together and I came with an idea doing that. Without all those ideas, I would be not someone like I'm now. Yeah. And with everything that you're planting, can I plant another one by the way? Okay. And with everything that you're planting, are you like planning on selling these or is it just for family consumption? Um, at the moment now, as we know, we are um, staying in a, just a residential place. Yes. So at the moment now, we're just focusing in uh, for home consumption. Okay. Because this also helps my families instead of buying food from the market. Yeah. So it is available in your backyard. And you're uh, saving a lot of money. Yes, that's the thing. And also, we know there's a price of the produce increasing due to yes. uh, high input into the garden yeah. in the farm and also another thing um, i found out most of the food in the market we really don't know it is organic or inorganic as everyone knows inorganic food it's not good for our yeah. health for especially for long term run and uh, this um, as, uh, some farmers uh, this is not to be against uh, the farmers but i have to just mention this yeah. Some they forgot to they apply the chemical. They doesn't follow the instruction properly. It mentioned to be reused after a week or two weeks. But some of them they just came and harvest it before the pe period of consumption. So it's like a risk over there. Mm -hmm. But at least not to disencourage the farmers yeah. in nowadays. Funny you should say that because our episode last week actually focused on that. And we spoke about the withholding period after you spray your chemicals yes. and how long you need to wait because that's uh, that chemical is a poison, you know, yes. it's supposed to kill uh, things you don't want on the plant. So that if you're putting that into your body, that's I mean, it's really not good for health. And our experts told us that it contributes to things like NCDs. Yeah. So uh, NCDs, we have uh, now most of us notice this increase in cancer. Most of us nowadays, uh, we notice even in the health and it's globally, it's cancer. Uh, most of the, this cancer, they, it's also contribute from the food we eat, processed food, and also the chemicals, because this uh, uh, chemical will, will go and contribute into our body that um, metabolize inside our body that uh, can start to cause a cancer cell. Yeah. This uh, cancer cell will just uh, start from a single cell and it will be just multiply, uh, multiply within our body. Yeah. So therefore, um, consuming something that is being uh, uh, affected or being has a chemical inside can also cause into uh, cause or contribute to cancer, especially in a long term run. Um, the thing it's about uh, eating healthy and organic food, even for myself as a person studying. Yeah. I have noticed when I was eating a lot of uh, processed uh, food. Yeah. Um, as you know, studies we really busy and schedule. Yeah. So what we used to do is just whatever is available, noodle and all those stuff. We just it's already available. True. But one thing I found out, it makes me not that person to be really active. And it's like uh, more stress into us. But when I change my diet, yeah. when I start just uh, taking cabbage and vegetable uh, for salad or boiling it uh, just in school, I see that my life has been changed a lot. Yeah, it's I'm really active, and I like the stress level been reduced. Even though the same workload I've been doing for the previous time, yeah. I noticed there's a big, huge change when you start eating uh, organic food and even vegetable. I'm sure you're already impressed, but wait till you see how Chaweli DIYs his own fertilizer, compost and planting pots. Join us next week on Green Pillars for more farming fun.